Hi, good morning. Um, so I'm not sure whether it's my session or not, but I'm just going to uh, continue presenting because I'm called to present right now. Um, but anyway, um, I actually need a, the, the presenter's yeah, remote, please. Okay, while he's uh, on his way here, how are you guys doing? First time to Malaysia? Anyone first time? First time to Malaysia? Wow, awesome. That's a big, good crowd. How do you guys like it so far? Is it nice? All right. So remember, in, when you come to Malaysia, just remember you have to visit all the nice sites and of course you have to enjoy the food because Malaysia is all about the food. So make sure you try to enjoy as much as possible. So, <clears throat> so today I'm going to present to you about um, this topic. How prepared are you for the digital era? All right, so um, I'll be presenting um, some of the um, trends that is happening around the world today. And also at the same time, I'm going to share with you some of the tools that you can use uh, in order for you to reach your goals. All right. Just want to make sure it works. All right, so this is a chart of the uh, basic human needs. So I'm sure you've seen this before. Have you guys seen this of the, this chart before? This pyramid, basic human needs. You need about self actu actualization. You need esteem, love, belonging. But do you think it's relevant until today? Yeah. Still relevant? I think there is a new, updated version of this. I'm just going to show you the next slide. If it works. Yeah. So that's the basic human needs. So I just added the layer of Wi-Fi. So I guess, um, like most of us, even if you guys just travel to Malaysia, as soon as you arrive at the airport, what do you do? You just want to connect to the Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, so I can relate to that, So because I travel quite often as well. So it's the first thing that we want to do. So that actually shows you how much we are relevant to the digital era, because we all want to be connected. We want to make sure that as soon as we arrive at certain countries, we want to get in touch with our friends, we want to get in touch with our family as soon as possible. So, as you know, uh, we are very much connected. We use um, a lot of these social media platforms to, to, you know, to, to get in touch with family and friends. If you want to find new information, we always, we always Google, right? We always Google for something, for new information, anything at all. It was essentially information at our fingertips. We, we can get or learn any new information uh, as fast as you want, all right? Yeah, so even cats and animals nowadays, they can even do Wi-Fi as well. So this actually shows how much we are very much connected, even like um, a lot of things that we, we refer to the internet to get us entertained, um, to get us uh, new information and things like that. So now I'm going to show you some of the current and future tech trends and why is it important and why is it relevant to what you guys are doing today. All right, so uh, in the next few slides, um, I'll be showing some videos, uh, which are um, a mix of videos, basically, of all the future technologies and even some of the current technologies that we see today. And because um, all of the technology that is happening around us today, it is because they are actually essentially f the future of jobs, because according to the World Economic Forum, 65% of the kids who go to the primary school today, they will actually take up the jobs which have not existed yet. So can you imagine what kind of jobs which are not existed yet? Anyone? Anything? All right, so you have no idea. So that's okay. So because I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the next few slides, we'll actually give you some ideas on why, what are the future jobs that are coming to us? Um, in terms of um, how it uh, relates to all the new technologies. So, all right, so the first one, this is, have you guys seen this photo before of this car before? Anyone seen this before? No? So this is Waymo. Waymo is a self-driving car developed by Google. All right, so I'm going to show you the next video uh, and how exciting this uh, technology is. I'm using Bemo for everyday things, getting to walk, 
running errands, getting groceries. It's really easy to just call the Waymo. It'll pick you up, drop you off, and you can forget about it. I will just do my thing, talk to my sister, do some calculus homework, and then I was just like, it's, it's kind of normal. Waymo is super cool. Well, I notice a lot of things when I'm driving along that I haven't really noticed before because you're always focused on the road. You know, I've lived in the same neighborhood for 20 years. I wouldn't have thought I would miss so much. My own car is sort of gathering dust in the uh, driveway. Yeah, being one of the first people in, in the driverless Waymo, I was actually kind of curious what other people's reactions would be. It looked like there was a ghost in there because you could see the steering wheel turning, but there's no one there. I get to ride in one of these. It's, it's actually, it's mind-blowing for me. That experience itself is you know, something that I'll want to tell my grandkids about, even if they don't care. <laughs> so I'll bore them with it. So I, was, <laughs> I was there from the start. It's kind of like a part of history. Wow, is that, isn't that amazing? So imagine, um, you guys, you know, you guys know Uber, Grab, or those guys from Indonesia, Gojek, right? So you, you usually just summon a car and then they come to you and, you know, send you places. But imagine in the future, of, it's not even the future, it's already happening right now. You can just use your app, summon a car, and a car without a driver comes to your home and pick you up and send you somewhere. Is it exciting? Scary? Scary? Yeah. Yeah. So those are the kind of technology that is happening, um, you know, already happening actually. So I'm going to show you another one. All right. So this is a slightly smaller version of the self-driving car. So if you see this video, you see a, um, it has two compartments and it's actually showing you all the different things inside. Um, so the next video will actually show you what it is all about. Just going to make sure it works. Every day there are things you need to get and things you need to do. What if some of those things could be done for you, easily and affordably, by someone else? Or by something else? At Neuro, we've created a self-driving vehicle to do just that. A new class of vehicle, specially designed to navigate neighborhoods. Keep what's outside even safer than what's inside. We're working hard to make every day a little easier. To bring you anything, anywhere, anytime so you can spend your time on the things that matter most. Neuro is building technology that works for all of us. This is just our beginning. Wow, isn't that amazing? So eventually, you know, when you need to buy uh, things from the supermarket, for example, you no longer have to go there physically yourself. You can just order online and just maybe one, one hour later, you're gonna have a self-driving car having all the things that you wanted to buy delivered to your doorstep. All right, so I'm gonna show you another one, sorry. Um, okay, it gets, all right, I'm gonna go back. All right, so uh, we're gonna talk a bit on robotics technology as well because a lot of the things that you have already seen just now, the self-driving car, they're all driven by the something called the artificial intelligence or as most people would say, AI. Um, you know, AI technology, it's, um, it's an emerging technology that is being used in many applications around the world. Even like things like for your Facebook, for example. Remember, 
you know when you post a photo of yourself on Facebook and then uh, a photo of you of, of your friends and, le and then suddenly Facebook um, showing you would you like to tag your friend and then it is actually suggesting the friends and the name, the name of your friends because the technology behind that is actually artificial intelligence it is able to see um, you know the face of your friends and then uh, tie that to their Facebook account and then suggesting you um, you know to tag uh, your friend so that is an um, example an easy example of artificial intelligence so for robotics for example I'm going to show you a video so this is a technology by Boston Dynamics, uh, their US base. So they are specializing in developing uh, robotics for, um, for the industry. So as you can see, just this video was released a couple of months ago. So this robot actually um, programmed to navigate inside buildings. So traditionally, when people go inside buildings, they need, they need to do uh, building inspections. Uh, they come in and then just uh, you know take photos but in the future this is what will happen they will use robots to, to to navigate around buildings to take photos to do building inspections so even to go places where it's not you know where it's dangerous or it's not safe and it is so advanced um, the robotics technology if I'm going to show you the next video that it can even actually do something like this So now the robots can jump like that. Yeah. Look at that. And that is so high tech. They are actually almost work. Um, you know, they walk almost like humans. So I think in the next five to ten years, we'll start to see even more robots on the roads or even in the environment to do a lot of different things for us. Okay. And uh, finally, I'm going to show you another last video. Can you please forward the slide? All right. All right. So uh, finally, about retail spaces like this. Um, so normally, like um, if you go to you know convenience store, if we go to the supermarket, what do you hate most? Anybody? Sorry, the lines, right? So let's see what this technology can do. Four years ago, we started to wonder, what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion, much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out Technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lines, no checkout. No, seriously. So it says coming early 2017. It's actually, they already have implemented that um, in the US. They already have three stores, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So even China, they already have um, a lot of this as well, uh, very much relevant to, to a self-checkout technology. So that actually ties to the kind of skills you need to develop for, you know, for the future of jobs or anything that you do today. So these are just the, uh, the kind of skills that you need um, for 2020, actually go beyond that. So you need skills like 
complex problem solving. You need to be able to think critically. Creative thinking is always, is always a must, especially in um, today's uh, environment. You need to be able to manage people because um, it's very critical that you be able to, you know, to manage certain projects at the same time. The kind of people that, and resources that you need to reach your goals. And of course, you need to be able to coordinate with others. So I believe those, the, the organizers of this program today, they do a lot of these things as well. For example, how do they coordinate with all the different speakers and to be here today? And uh, these are just some, uh, some of the skills um, which are very essential, actually, for future jobs. All right, let's just go to the next one. So I'm going to show you what kind of digital tools available out there for you to reach your goals. Because a lot of these uh, things that you see on the internet today, everything, they are developed using all the various tools available. Whether you want to, you know, to develop certain um, programs or you want to develop certain stories for your, for your, for your programs or for, your, for you to market certain products. Let's show you this one. Because a lot of these different things that you already see on the internet today, it's all about marketing, it's about, all about telling stories, okay? So just like what uh, this master of uh, marketing, Seth Godin said, marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but about the stories that you, you, that you tell. So it's very important that you be able to tell good stories and because, for example, I'm going to give you one easy example, Hollywood movies. The reason why they're so successful, because they're able to tell you stories. Because you always remember, people always remember good stories. They don't, when you do some, you know, uh, for example, an, uh, a startup founder, when they do pitching or things like that, from the, uh, our observation, most of the time, when they get investment, it's not because of all, I mean, not primarily because of all the different figures or stats that able, they're able to present, but more of the story that they're able to tell, the kind of vision they can tell to investors. So uh, let's go to the next slide. All right, YouTube. YouTube, right? So YouTube, it has been around for, for many years. Um, eventually, they started off very simple product, but eventually they got acquired by, by Google. Um, so YouTube, it gives you a platform for you to share a lot of different things. You're able to upload your videos. So I'm going to show you one example of this kid here, Ryan. Ryan. So Ryan, what he does is, he's, you know, he's a small kid. Uh, what he does is he, um, he, he does reviews of toys. And you know how much he made last year? I'll just show if you can explain. Yeah, so Ryan made... $22 million last year just by playing with toys. Yeah. So I guess, do you guys want to make that much money? Right? So I'm just going to, this is just a, one example how YouTube, you're able to leverage on tools like YouTube to get yourself online. Because as I mentioned earlier, marketing is not just about selling the products, it's about telling stories. And this is how, you know, toy companies like to Toys R Us, and some of the toy companies uh, from around the world, they work together with, with Ryan by sending him toys to his house, and he's actually making videos and upload, upload them to YouTube. And this is how they engage with customers. And of course, Instagram. Who doesn't have any Instagram account? Who doesn't have? Anyone has Instagram account? Yeah, I guess most of them, use, well, most of guys do have Instagram account. So I'm just, uh, just like Instagram as well, it has a lot of um, you know, followers. I mean, it has a lot of uh, people who are on Instagram on a daily basis. Um, in fact, you, just, you guys seen this before, right? The 10-year challenge, which is just happening, the trending topics that's happen been happening um, since, since last week. So these are the kind of things that you can also leverage on. Uh, Instagram, you can reach a lot of uh, potential customers, a potential audience that who wants to look listen to you know what you're trying to promote all the programs that you you want to run medium have you guys used medium before and you guys yeah i saw some hands there so medium is actually a good platform as well because 
a medium gives you the opportunity for you to write on something. And because medium has a huge amount of people using on the platform, you're able to tell a lot of news stories or you have ideas that you want to share around. Medium is actually a good platform. Like this one here, he, this guy, um, his story is actually one of the most shared stories on Medium. He wrote it, I think, uh, last year, I think. Yeah, it was uh, mid of last year. So currently, it has been shared for about, at least on Medium platforms, about 500,000 times. That is actually quite a lot. Imagine 500,000 times. Um, potentially, it can reach to up to millions of um, audience. And of course, LinkedIn. Do not underestimate the power of LinkedIn because LinkedIn is, has recently, it's, um, they have done a lot of improvement on the platform. And for example, if you, if you have um, something that you want to post on LinkedIn, for example, compared to Facebook, if you post videos on LinkedIn, it has more reach compared to Facebook right now. Because what Facebook is trying to do right now is just trying to get more people to uh, especially for, for advertisers to, be, to pay on the platform. So the, reaches, uh, the reach on Facebook has been reduced um, over the recent years, but LinkedIn is actually becomes um, uh, a place for a lot of the advertisers because it gives them uh, more places to reach a potential audience. And lastly, um, Canva. Anyone had heard of Canva before? All right, I see a lot of hands. So, so Canva is actually an awesome platform because previously I have, you know, I, I like to, you know, to publish some marketing online so on, on Facebook and social media. So Canva gives you the opportunity to craft something even you don't have any design knowledge. So it has a lot of templates you can find online even for, uh, for Facebook, for Instagram posts, even for PowerPoint presentation and things like that. Even you can even design posters. So it has this pre-built templates, you can just uh, plug in all the information that you need and you're ready to go. So uh, it's a free tool. Um, you need to pay um, when you need to start to use some of the, uh, uh, some of the assets, for example, the pictures, uh, some of the graphics that or the icons uh, that are not free, then you actually have to pay for it. All right, so just a bit of background. So I'm uh, from a company called Cyberview. So I'm in charge of innovation um, at a technology city of Cyberjaya, which is Malaysia's global technology hub. So Cyberjaya is actually located 30 kilometers south of Kuala Lumpur. So if you actually arrive um, in Malaysia, you will definitely not miss Cyberjaya because it's actually just uh, 20 minutes from the airport. So what we do, we do a lot of exciting things in, in, in Cyberjaya. Uh, in terms of you know developing um, a smart city, we embed a lot of new technologies um, in the city because this city actually started from nothing. So 20 years ago, it was a huge oil palm plantation, but today it's um, it's um, it's a hub for new innovation. A lot of a lot of new technology companies are based there. So my role specifically is to scout for new technologies. So I. You know, I work with robots. I mean, not really working with robots, but I um, explore new technologies like this, um, some smart mobility, um, and of course, uh, we just we recently launched a, a e-scooter sharing service in the city. So we also work with um, you know drone technology like this to explore how we can use a drone technology uh, for the future use, for example, for deliveries and things like that. All right, so just to sum up everything, there is no bad idea, only bad execution. So if you have any ideas at all, just remember all the tools that I've shared with you, you can use them to, you know, to reach some of your goals. So it's very important to not to worry too much about perfection because a perfection usually will stop you from being creative or being innovative, all right? And finally, that's my contact. You can connect me on LinkedIn. If you have any question at all, that is my email address. All right, thank you very much.